Today, I will talk about how to estimate expected loss by modeling EAD, PD, and LGD. So what is expected loss? The expected loss is the average credit loss that we would expect from exposure of portfolio over a given period of time. See this graph. The expected loss is this part which shows the average credit loss. After expected loss, until certain confidence level, this area is called economic capital. The expected loss can be calculated with the following formula. Expected loss equal exposure at default times probability of default times loss given default. First of all, let's clarify several terminologies. What is exposure at default? Exposure at default is the total value a bank is exposed to when a loan defaults. Probability of default, PD, is a financial term describing the likelihood of a default over a particular time horizon. Loss given default, or LGD, is the share of an asset that is lost if a borrower defaults. Let's take a look at our example. For example, we are this EL bank. Another party is the ABC company. We bought $500 million bond of this ABC company. And also, we have a line of commitment, $500 million, to this ABC company. First of all, let's calculate exposure at default. There are two parts for exposure at default. One part is outstanding. For example, if we bought $500 million of corporate bond of ABC company, we have outstanding $500 million. The second part is the commitment. But not all the commitment is at risk. Only commitment times usage given default is at risk. So how do we calculate usage given default, UGD? First, I went to the company's website and checked the credit rating of this ABC company. It says this ABC company is rated as BBB according to S&P. Now let's calculate exposure at default according to Michael Ong's internal credit risk model. In order to calculate EAD, we need to decide UGD first. We can get this UGD lookup table from a commercial company or from our past historical data. On the left side is the rating of the company, on the right side is the UGD. Because ABC's company's rating is BBB, we can use VLOOKUP function to pick up the UGD from this lookup table. And then our EAD is equal to outstanding plus the percentage of this unused commitment. In this example, we got $825 million as our EAD. Now, let's decide the probability of default according to Morton's structure model. In this model, it compares the 
asset of the company with certain default point. In this graph, you can see the company's asset starting from V0. Over time, it will increase. There is a certain probability the asset might fall below this default point. The probability of the company's assets fall into this area is probability of default. I'll show you where I got historical data about this ABC company. This is a website that provides free financial data for everyone. This is called Financial Modeling Prep. You can go to this website, and there are many data there, including financial statement, historical price of the stock, and the company's rating. It's very useful. And if you type this URL on their website, it will download the data in an Excel spreadsheet. I downloaded ABC Company's financial statements for the last 10 years, and I put total asset of ABC Company in this spreadsheet. After we draw the graph, you can see for the last 10 years, the total assets of this company went up and came down. If we try to fit a straight line, the R square only 0 0.05. So really, it doesn't fit a straight line. And if we only take the first five years and try to fit a straight line, the R squares change to 0 0.8586 and it's increasing its total assets by 6% every year. Consider this company is an energy company. It might have a cycle every 10 years or so. So this part really depends on your business judgment. You can see this company is going down, or this company is hitting the bottom, and now it will come back. For the liability of this company, I put short-term liability here, and the long-term liability here. If we check the graph, you can see the liability also came up and then went down. Now we come to the spreadsheet to calculate PD according to Merton's model. First of all, the firm value, I put it here. This is came from the financial statement and expected return, I put 6%. This is according to the first five years. And the volatility, I calculate it according to the asset level of this ABC company. You can see the maximum of short-term liability for this ABC company is about $8 billion, and the long-term liability about $20 billion. Now we put the assumption, say, the default point depends on if the short-term liability is $5 billion, long-term liability is $15 billion. And the default point is calculated by the 100% of short-term liability and the 50% of the long-term liability. So the default point will become $12.5 billion. That means if the company's total assets hit this point, it will default. This is the formula to calculate the distance to default. The numerator 
is calculated by the firm value, expect return, time, volatility, and also default point. And then the denominator is decided by the volatility and the time. After we calculated the numerator and the denominator, we got this distance to default. And then, assuming this distribution is a normal distribution, we will calculate probability of default according to this distance to default. In this example, we got 18.09%. Now, we will decide LGD according to beta distribution. What is beta distribution? Beta distribution is a continuous probability distribution having two parameters, alpha and beta. If alpha and beta are different, it will show different distribution. For example, if alpha is 3 and beta is 8. You can see this distribution more le lean towards the 0. And on this graph, if alpha is 8 and beta is 3, you can see the probability density more lean towards the far end. According to Moody's Ultimate Recovery Database, for the bond, the LGD at default on average is this 53%, and also the standard error of mean is about 1%. I want to use this number to construct this beta distribution. Moody's has a system called loss calc for calculating loss given default. In this article, you can see if we know the mean and sigma and max, and then we can calculate alpha and beta. And also it says if it's bound we set max as 1.1, 1 .1. otherwise the max will be 1. Now we go back to our spreadsheet. Based on the historical data, the average is 57.4 and the standard deviation is 1.04%. We put it here and then we can calculate implied alpha by this formula and we can calculate implied beta with this formula and also because we have bound the maximum is 1.1 if we check the graph we can see This is normal distribution, and this one is our beta distribution. You can see it's very sharp at this point. It's not like normal distribution, quite broad. The so mean recovery is alpha divided by the sum of alpha plus beta, which is 52.18% in this example. And LGD is 1 minus mean recovery, give us 47.82%.
Now we can calculate our expected loss. The EAD is equal to 825 million. And the PD equal to 18.09% and LGD equal to 47.82% and our expected loss equal to EAD times PD times LGD give us about $71 million. In summary, we calculated expected loss by modeling exposure at default, probability of default, and loss given default. For exposure at default, we use Michael Onk's internal credit risk model. For probability of default, we use Merton structure model. For loss given default, we use beta distribution. This is how I estimate expected loss with EAD, PD, and LGD modeling. Please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.